Hi, my name is Karen Holmes. I'm the founder and director of the World Peace Organization for the One World Government. Uh, this morning I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, something that affects every single person on the planet right now. And I wanted to clarify how to kind of solve this problem that we're having. Okay, from an individual basis, but it applies to everyone. Okay, when we have all been, for a long time, we've all lived within a structure that is very stable. And uh, we've relied on, let's say, doctors, possibly for going for medical problems. We've relied on the, the universities. We've relied on corporations and businesses. And we've had a structure how, in government. We've, we've had a structure that is fairly stable. There have been times when things have been really, really uh, uncomfortable. Like we've had movements, that, like the race movement, for example. Uh, we've had we've had problems where they've they've haven't been uh, resolved. Okay, so th th eventually, what has happened now after all of these different things that have happened over the years, we've reached the point now where the power games that people play don't work. Uh, where we are hitting hitting this paradigm shift, and that's what I wanted to share with you a little bit today. Imagine that we've had a, a really good analogy is being on the Titanic. Okay, so we've, people have, during that the time period that people would, they, of course, they, the air, airplanes weren't really very uh, advanced to where they could travel long distances. So people still relied on uh, when they were traveling to between the the North American continent and Europe and and uh, that they they relied on ships and they were there were many many ships going back and forth all the time uh, and they they developed a very nice uh, way of traveling there were there were the different levels of passage where people could be the super wealthy could go and they could have their fancy meals and be treated with a great deal of like the what their the lifestyle they were used to or there were people just coming to America or going back home to England to visit relatives or whatever uh, their situation was there they would were traveling and and there were people who uh, were had scraped together so that they could come to America and start a new life. Lots of different people traveling on that same situation. When when the Titanic hit the hit the the iceberg and it started to sink, all of a sudden that life was over, and they they were those people were put into a very terrifying situation. Uh, many lost their lives. Um, many got into the lifeboat, which seemed like a good time period, but that was a very unstable place also because it was cold. It, they didn't they weren't prepared for the the shock of it. they they were they were just as they were not in the water anymore, but it was very uncomfortable also and it wasn't until they got into a new structure. <coughs> And then they had to, the Carpathian came and rescued them and other rescue ships came. And then they headed back, continued on with their journey. Uh, <clears throat> there were people, I, I watched an article, there were people who, who worked on the ships who, who went down three or four times in, in their lifetime. They, they, that was a very dangerous way to travel also. So now the reason I'm talking about this is it's very similar to where we are now. <clears throat> We've been traveling along with a very stable structure for a while. And now, now even though it's been hard at times, you know, for some people, at different times it's easier and better. <clears throat> and other times it's much worse in different groups of people. Then what has happened now 
is like the the games don't work the are the existing structure is collapsing it's going down and now we have we're being put into a situation where let's say people are fighting for their survival people are trying to survive they're they're going into the people who feel that they're losing their lives are shooting other people and you know uh, acts of domestic terrorism and things like that school shootings and because they can't deal with conflict resolution things like that now what we want to do is like there many people are dying in the situation with a pandemic too and then there's people because they don't know the root cause of that it looks like it's just going to keep on going on and then people are getting into the lifeboats and then then we have to figure out how to get to safety and then to move into a time when we're in another a place where we can start to live again we overcome the crisis that we have we have to be able to reach new york okay from the titanic idea the people the survivors have to go and then rebuild their lives again and they have to decide if their their lives have been shattered completely because their husbands are dead or whatever they have to figure out how to get their life so that's where we are right now is we've existing structures collapsing the you could say that uh, let's say that you're see, we're seeing it over and over again we're seeing it in how about the the let's say my letter to the supreme court uh, let's say the Iraq war started to collapse the power games that created the schism that's going on uh, and then so the power games don't work anymore you could say that that when you this happened during the time of Jesus when they crucified or any of the 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 leaders the spiritual leaders that I call them avatars of the the seven major religions they introduced the existing structure was collapsing there were problems and then they introduced something new and it was a new a paradigm shift that caused the problems and then people were saying you know we we have to rely on this and now it's this the same thing happened during the the writing of the the american revolution when they were trying to talk about the constitution so what are we going to do and then talking about slavery and things where we could we can't deal with this you know and then we have to come into the do then they're starting to come in for a transition period after it was established and then now we're in this new structure but the cycle is coming around again and we're going through and doing the same thing again the old structure is collapsing so it happens in families it happens with homelessness it happens where where you have might have a job or a career how about the immigrants coming from central america or anywhere uh how about about vladimir putin when when he's trying to fight for his his uh his um, supremacy to see who the next superpower is is he taking the games that have been played to the next level down not the next level up so as we do this as we're making this paradigm shift right now the third dimensional games don't work anymore and to step off onto the lifeboat is basically to let's say realize that there is a new structure that's coming about i was talking to some people earlier and they were we were talking about science and religion you could say that the the structure for the pandemic the pandemic was the scientific aspect was or they're holding on to it and it's a structure that's collapsing because they couldn't find the cure uh, they couldn't find a vaccine and now many many people have died okay so then the new idea is that that there is a the two this is what i introduced was for the the pandemic that that the two pieces of information that was missing 
from our understanding for vaccines, relying on the vaccine idea that wasn't that was collapsing. The two things that were missing were where viruses come from and how the viruses move between people and animals and animals and people. What was what once those two pieces of information were available, then the logical idea came out for how to solve the problem. The pandemic, a solution was there, but what happens when we rely on the existing structure? How about people who have cancer and there's a cure for cancer that doesn't depend on chemotherapy? Then it's like the old structure as it's collapsing. It's okay, so then we've stepped onto this lifeboat, the understanding. And then everybody has to be able to transition from the lifeboat into the this rescue ship and start working together to create to get to where we want to be. So it's the the idea is that you can say that we have we have science and then as we go into this new idea, it's like an alternate reality. And the alternate reality is an expanded awareness idea. You could say the conspiracy theorists, some of the people who are conspiracy theorists have introduced ideas that are revolutionary. Think of Nikola Tesla, for example, coming up with all these inventions. Or we're looking at at Elon Musk and we're looking at Bill Gates and we're looking at these technological giants. <clears throat> but when we do, when, when, as I've said previously, when we introduce new technology, there's a, there's a duality that comes about because is it going to be used for, for curing the problems or is it going to be used for a weapon? And this is where, where we have uh, Vladimir Putin now with his new weapon systems that are unstoppable. <clears throat> but are they a reaction to the idea of the world peace plan coming out? Because that came out in 2011. Is this something where we need to do this? And then how do we go over to the next step where we're on the rescue ship? And that is bringing everyone together on this debate and then finding out that the rescue ship is where you're leaning on the two ideas, let's say science and religion, are they lean on each other. And if you have a spiritual idea, if you have the existing structure that's all science, and then you come up with a spiritual concept about where viruses come from and, and where how animals go, uh, how it goes between humans and animals, then what you have is this new idea and it's destabilizing. It's, it's, it's a solution, but it's destabilizing things. And then you have to start to address where religion fits in. And that's not stable either because we're looking at the instability of misunderstandings related to religion and where we are, what religion really is. Science is one thing, and religion is the other, and they come together and they lean on each other, and they explain things. <clears throat> so we're not looking at science, and all the, the scientific progress we've made, it's been remarkable. But what's been missing out of it is an understanding that it re leans on religion. And the unified field theory, for example, is the, sci the scientific explanation the mathematicians are Albert Einstein was looking for the unified field theory but the religious people I'm I'm a theologian you could say I'm the pure ray of theology I'm looking at the pure principles of theology and th science and religion lean on each other so what religion what science is missing can be explained by religion and what religion is missing can be explained by science the unified field theory has already been found, and we call it God. The theologians call the all that is God. But 
what is the definition, the true definition of God? Is it the Christian idea? Is it Muslim? Is it, what is it? So it's that unifying idea that explains how religion works and the pure principles of science and the pure principles of religion. And they lean on each other and then they solve this problem. And that allows us to create this new structure that that is the paradigm shift, you could say, that allows us to move into our future. The same thing is happening with, with the Supreme Court. You could say the chaos in our legal system, the, the idea of taking away the rights of the people, and the fear that's associated with the Supreme Court and the delegitimizing it, the issue of whether it's delegitimizing it. And then the letter to the Supreme Court comes out that explains the idea of the three levels where you're, the Supreme Court, the, the existing laws and the existing st structure is collapsing because it, it was missing something. It's missing the idea that there's three levels of the universe, not two, and it's universal law, constitutional law, and federal law. And it's not just constitutional law and federal law. So that allows us, this introduction of this is destabilizing, and people are going, okay, we have to figure out what human rights are, unalienable rights, and this introduces this. We, we're going to have to fight to protect what we have, and that's sinking. And then this new structure is there, but it's unstable. And then we have to look at unalienable rights, and we have to look at the Senate, and that's what the next thing is, is the Senate is looking at, it. It. it its two roles are to confirm Supreme Court justices, and to injustices, and judges, and such, and then, but it also is supposed to represent the rights of the people. So when they put in judges that are, are part of this collapsing structure, that are saying, well, you have the right to take away your rights, and you don't. We have a bunch of old men, old white men on the Supreme Court, so to speak, and now it's more diverse. We have this, this idea that this is collapsing, but it can transition into this new idea, and then it can come forward and it can look at the idea of, once again, this new structure idea, of unalienable rights and human rights and who God is and why we have our unalienable rights that are given to us by our Creator. And that allows us to take the paradigm shift that leaves us in a new land, you could say the holy land, where where we are are creating a new structure. It happens over and over again, this idea of the paradigm shift. Moses had with the Pharaoh, and then going into the idea of Moses and creating, let my people go, letting go of slavery, and then the the, the 40 years in the desert, and then cre going to the Holy Land, how this paradigm shift changes. Okay. So it happens over and over again. It happens if you're in a home and you feel like you don't have a home and all of a sudden you're homeless. You might have lots of money. Um, how about the Great Depression and the banking structure and the, the stock exchange and all of a sudden it's collapsing and people are jumping off ledges to because they can't figure out how to how to survive that and then then they're going to the next idea and they're coming up come, trying to come up with a way to stabilize things um, and then they're going they had to make this paradigm shift and it isn't always a paradigm shift that goes up it can be a paradigm shift that goes down and that is when you go down into um, it's like the crossroads where you can go down into fascism and things like that. So when when the fear associated with it, we have to address this idea of what we have here, and then the the Carpathian idea where we're going, we're getting on a a 
a boat that is going to take us to safety and where we build this new structure. The our founding fathers did that with the end of with the Revolutionary War, and are we going to become a our own, are we going to declare independence? Are we going to, uh, what are we going to do? Are we going to create this new transition period and then that after a period of time we have this new structure? All right, so it op happens over and over and over again. The choice, you, you get out of your crisis situation and then you have to understand what you did wrong. You have to understand the principles of it. You have to start, and then you start to build trust, and that is a new structure. And then, then you go through this transition period, and then you start to make your choice. Are you going to choose to go to New York, or if you are, if it's in a time period that's where you're your ship has sunk and you're now a prisoner of war you know you're going the wrong direction you could say you need to figure out make a, a choice about which direction you're going to go to and we're kind of at the crossroads now so that's all i wanted to say i know i've i've gone over and over this but uh many times but that's where we are now with the next step is to start to address we have the collapse of the old. We have the new idea that's being being introduced, but there's all this turmoil associated with the resistance and things like that. But then now, what the next step is, is to understand what we've done wrong. We're purifying the legal system. Katanji Brown Jackson, Justice Jackson, is a really nice influence on the court, I think. And we'll see where, where she is. Yesterday she had her, her, first, her first day um, sitting at the table. And now we're going to see how this plays out, what kind of influence she has on this. And then start to transition into the period where we start to purify the U.S. legal system. And which way are we going to go? Are we going to be dragged going to resist the idea of the international government and be dragged backwards in our progress by fighting a war with Vladimir Putin, a nuclear war? Are we going to rely on re we establish the existing structure, fall back to a tradition where we are going to go and and instead of building a new structure, we're just going to reinstate the old one? Uh, and, okay, I'm I'm not going to allow any changes. We're going to go back to tradition, or are we going to take the Constitution to the next level and make it a, a and uh, instead of climbing the ladder of success, we're going to make it a flat hierarchy where everybody's equal and everybody is functioning from their own capacity, and that allows everybody to start to create a sense of, when that happens, that allows us to rebuild an economy that's based on win-win agreements rather than, than you're climbing on people's shoulders. People are cli lifting you onto their shoulders rather than you climbing onto their backs. Okay? We don't need maximum pressure. That's what I wanted to say is maximum pressure is failed policy because where it does is it leads to it leads to people going down. Vladimir Putin is now demonstrating the failure of maximum pressure. We as Americans we looked at Donald Trump. Not everybody thought maximum pressure was the was the right idea, but is maximum pressure going to get us where we want to be? where we want to have a sense of prosperity. All of Donald Trump's supporters, you can say the vast majority of them, I can't say all, put him in power because they, he, they, believed, they believed that he was going to create a sense of prosperity. But we're not. The economy is going down, you can say. It's still growing back from the, from the pandemic, but are we more prosperous now? Uh, what what is the structure economic structure going to be like when we go are we going to go down are we going to allow russia and china china is oppressive 
uh, they they need vast amounts of natural resources. They're going out and there's they're getting them by making deals with the the warlords kind of things or the people and who who basically and the the natural resources are not going to the people. So this is happening over and over and over and over again. And the plan for the international government is this paradigm shift that we need to make in our thinking to get on the Carpathian, get off the lifeboat, get on the Carpathian, and then head for prosperity, uh, the new land where the, and that's why they went, is because the streets were paved with gold. It was an opportunity for everybody to get their life on a higher level so to speak. So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about today. So I, I, I want to thank you for stopping by and, and um, talk to you later.